Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, December 11th, and it is a cold-ish, rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Rain has not started yet, but it is forecast, and uh, it's a bit chilly out there. Anyway, not bad for December. Not bad at all. Haven't gotten a hard freeze yet, no snow. We'll see. So today, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm what I'm enjoying this uh, holiday season as we get closer and closer to uh, the Christmas celebration as we move through Advent and uh, go down that road. So what what am I smoking? Well, this is my Boswell that I got with my buddy Jack Kurtz. He worked with uh, with Boswell to design this. It's a uh, it's a calabash, and uh, I love this pipe. And I have not talked to Jack in quite a while. I'm a bad friend. Every time I try to call him, he's not in the room, and I, or I think to call him, and it's too late at night, or it's too early in the morning, and it's been too long. So I think when I finish this video, I'm going to try to give him a call. Well, it's early, so I, I'm going to try to give him a call this afternoon. I have in here, not that you're going to be able to read my chicken scroll here, but this is Kendall Cream, uh, Kendall Cream Flake. This was given to me by my buddy Couch, uh, and he gave it to me last year for Christmas, and I really enjoyed it. It's, um, it's a Lakeland, you know, which I was just saying on Friday night how I'm afraid of Lakelands, but this is a very, very mild topping. Um, and it is very creamy and delicious Virginia tobacco. It's really a nice flake. Not my typical, you know, burly, heavy, uh, perique kind of thing, but I think that's what choosing a holiday blend is really all about. You want to find something you enjoy, but is different, right? And if, you, if it's the same as everything else you're smoking, then it's not really different. By definition. <laughs> and I'm happy this year. I finally wised up. You know, for, for years I've been falling into this trap of, oh, let me try one more aromatic. Maybe this will be the year that I'll find that aromatic that I like. I'm not going to find that aromatic. I've got two I like. I'm happy with that. I don't need any more. So, the other nice thing about my holiday blends this year is that uh, they're both gifts. They, they both were given to me by, by folks I consider to be good friends. You know, my buddy Couch, uh, <clears throat> gotten to know him really well over the years. Uh, heck, I'm his dog's godfather. So, you know, we're, we're, we're close. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I love the idea that as I'm smoking this holiday blend, uh, my friends who, you know, may be quite distant, uh, in this case, not the other side of the planet, but, you know, not, I'm not going to drive over and say hi. Um, I, I can be connected to them by enjoying this tobacco. So that's a nice thing. So yeah, I would. I know this is hard to find the Kendall Cream Flake, but man, it is good, very, very good. If you're like me and you're afraid of Lakelands, it's probably a first excellent uh, choice uh, to to sort of dip your toe in that water. I will not be going in any deeper because I still don't understand. And we talked about this on on Friday. And Doug Owen, I hope I didn't. Uh, didn't come off as, as as aggressive or anything, but I just I just still don't get the whole geranium extract thing. Doug was kindly trying to inform me about the uh, the origins of Lakeland Essence, and I, I I took a rather argumentative tone because it doesn't make sense to me, and I I just I just find it the weirdest thing in the world that people decided one day to put geranium extract and rose water on top of perfectly good tobacco. What? 
such is life. But this is perfectly good tobacco. This is really a very, very nice blend. And it earns its keep it, its name um, in terms of it being very creamy. Uh, I don't often say that about tobaccos, but mainly because a lot of the things I smoke are rough burleys. But this is a very smooth, creamy uh, tobacco. Quite enjoyable. The other blend is also uh, a gift from a friend. Although I don't know for certain that this is the tin he gave me, I, I unfortunately have to say. But it is vintage Syrian, H&H uh, &H vintage Syrian, no longer being produced because, of course, Syria is not making any Latakia for sure. Now this, I've, I've probably been through six, maybe seven bowls now. Um, I was interested to try it because, uh, and I've said this before, you know, I used to be a lot of Kia smoker, an English smoker, whatever you want to call it, uh, way back. And then I kind of switched to cigars for quite a long time, I didn't smoke pipes. And then when I came back to pipes, I couldn't stand a lot of Kia. Uh, and it's been suggested that that might be a Syrian Cyprian thing, uh, because that was right around the time when Syrian was declining and Cyprian was filling the, the gaps. but. Um, I don't think it is based on my experience smoking some older blends. Like I got some original number 10 Downing Street, which was my everyday smoke. And I, this stuff was well before Lane stopped making it and then started making it again and everything. This was the stuff I was smoking. And it tasted, I, I don't want to say awful. I recognized it, but it wasn't pleasant anymore. That's because Latakia has this this sharpness to to it to, to my palate that I don't like. I I just find it unenjoyable. So anyway, uh, I was hoping maybe this would ring a bell, and you know what? It does. It it actually does. I still don't think. I think the Latakia thing is me rather than a change in in the leaf. Um. Yeah, I just I just don't like it anymore. And my palate changed, and, and that's fine. You know, we all have our our likes and dislikes. However, this does ring a bell in terms of the the, the, the flavor. So it's more it's more leathery is the best way I can explain it, and less uh, less of that smoky barbecue sauce kind of effect that some a lot of Kia blends have, which I quite frankly do not like. I prefer the leathery. Uh, end of things, and then this has that. This is this is definitely a very very nice smoke, um, but it does have that tart sharpness to it that kind of puts me off a bit. But I'm enjoying it. I, I'm definitely enjoying it. If it was still produced, I can't say that I would buy more. Um, but I'm glad I'm, I've got the chance to try this. And it's funny, you know, this is, you can't get this anymore at Smoking Pipes, but it's amazing how many tins of this have passed through my hands over the past couple of years. Uh, and I don't know why, because there's people that really love it. And I've given a lot away because I figure, well, it's a lot of Kia blend. I'm going to eventually get around to trying it, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to like it. So I've sent multiple tins out to people because people have given it to me and I've, I've passed it along. But the tin from Eric... I have two tins, this one, and there's another one in my cellar, up, uh, my cellar upstairs, sounds funny, but my tobacco cellar, and I don't know for certain if this is the tin that Eric S. gave me. I hope I mentioned that at the beginning. <laughs> this was also a gift from a friend. Um, I don't know if this is the tin that Eric gave me or if it, that's the one that's still up there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I appreciate it, Eric, and... Uh, again, smoking that is, is wonderful because it makes me think of my friendship with him. Uh, great guy. I really, really, uh, really value his friendship. Uh, and Couch is a great guy, too. So thank you both for making my holiday a little special this year. I appreciate that. So, two blends you probably won't be able to find, but that's what I'm enjoying this holiday season. All right. Um... 
Gotta get to the instant karma because I put it in the intro. So on Friday night, I was bragging. I was bragging about the fact that my wife has been gone for over three weeks and I've only had takeout once. I've managed to feed myself. I have fed the dogs relatively regularly and uh, they have not suffered. Um, I did not burn down the house. I haven't burned myself. I haven't cut myself. I haven't wound up in the emergency room. Uh, and I put the trash out. This is the biggest accomplishment. I, for three weeks, I put the trash out on the right night. And, uh, yeah, successfully have, I, I'm proud, you know, I was really proud. I was boasting about this. And so yesterday I, I came down here to cut some dovetails on that, uh, crop cutter project I'm working on. And I was working on the first set and I wound up cutting myself with chisels <laughs> four times in like a 15 minute period. Uh, first, I don't know if these are going to show or not, but the first one was right in here. That's the only one that got super glue. That's probably the hardest one to find because it was, it was, none of these are deep cuts. None of these are like, oh, I better get to the emergency room. But that one would not stop bleeding. Then I got a couple, like here's one and here's one. And they're, they're pretty minor cuts that, again, you may not be able to see them. But the last one, and I said to myself, you know, that's, that's stupid. I, and I, what I was doing was stupid. I was trying to quickly pare down the, the, pins portion of this, this dovetail joint and I wasn't paying attention to how it was held in the vise and I, I had my hand holding it and I, the chisel slipped and you know, so th four times I did this. Uh, the fourth one, and I said after the third one, if this happens again, I'm, I'm done for the day. The fourth one caught me right across the web of my hand and I don't know if you'll again be able to see anything there, but this one was very superficial, <laughs> thankfully, because it could have caught the web and been bad but boy did this one bleed I could not stop the, the bleeding on this I guess there's just a lot of capillaries in that area um, so anyway again it wasn't life-threatening or anything I'm, I'm making a big deal out of it um, so yeah karma don't boast because <laughs> you don't know what's coming uh, I at this point I said I'm done I turned off the lights and I went upstairs and and did not even think about chisels for the rest of the evening. At least I know my, my sharpening method is working. So that's a good thing, right? Um, yeah, so the moral of this story is if you're at all distracted, um, feeling rushed, feeling not focused, or just feeling stupid in my case, do not pick up a sharp tool. They can be very dangerous. A dog tool can be more dangerous, but a sharp tool in stupid hands is a dangerous thing. I am really happy with my sharpening. Now I've got it down to toil, two oil stones and a strop, and I think I might get rid of one of the oil stones. That's, that's how good this is working out. Uh, or get rid of the strop. I'm not sure which, but I like playing with this stuff. It's uh, the sharpening. Uh, you, there's been all sorts of stuff uh, on the internet. You just look up chisel sharpening, and you can you can spend six hours watching people telling you things that are often contradictory. I got a book. Do I have it here? No, I'd love to show you this book, but I don't have it here. Uh, Christopher Schwartz wrote, wrote a book called Sharpen This, and it, it, it's, it's, in, implied, it's intended to be, I don't know if I can say this properly, uh, it's, it's more of an, oh yeah, we'll sharpen this kind of thing, um, and he just, he sees the, the, the whole thing about sharpening has become more of a sport, as he put it. Um, there are people that have made careers out of sharpening. Uh, seriously, there are people that are, their their entire career is about sharpening uh, and and selling sharpening stones or selling a particular sharpening system. And the fact is, folks have been making furniture for a really long time, sharpening chisels on rocks, and that's about all you need. You know, you get you find the right texture of the rock, you put a little oil on it, it's going to be fine. If it's if it's flat, even better. Uh, you want it flat. Anyway. Uh, 
Now, Schwartz advocates using a, a sharpening jig, and I don't, I, I just freehand, but, you know, teach his own. It doesn't matter, and I don't think he would care one way or the other. In his mind, that's the most uh, direct path to getting back to work, and I get that, you know. Uh, but for me, taking the time to put the chisel on a jig is just going to take more time, so. But there are a few men on this planet that I would never disagree with, and he is one of them. At least when it comes to woodworking. He starts giving his opinion on pipes, maybe I'll disagree. I don't know. So, in summary, I love doing this because I ramble so much. Don't be stupid when you're working with sharp tools. Get yourself some vintage Syrian or some Kendall cream flake if you can. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas here in at cane rod pipes. Wife is still away. Um, talked to her last night. Dad's having some issues. Uh, her, her, my father-in-law. And uh, she may not. We don't know what's going on yet, but she might not actually be back for Christmas. So that's unfortunate and. I, of course, have the opportunity to go there for Christmas, but I have some doctor's appointments. I've got one on the 22nd, one on the 19th. So if I was to go, I'd have to go like on the 23rd, and I, I don't know. That's awfully close to Christmas. I'm going to sort of play it by ear and see what happens next week. Plus, I hate kenneling the dogs over Christmas. That's kind of sad. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, either way, I'm, I'm, I will be fine. Either way, uh, we've been we've been separated at Christmas before, and certainly at Thanksgiving before. That's that's a common occurrence because I don't like to travel on holidays. If you haven't noticed, I'm a fairly asocial person, so these kind of things do not bother me. In fact, I kind of enjoy being by myself. Not long term, mind you, but I was listening to uh, music this morning while I was doing dishes. Uh, I can just tell Google to play music, and it it learns over time. Like if you if you say play this song on YouTube, it, you got to have one of the screen ones to do this. Uh, It'll play that song, and it learns what you like, and so I can just tell it to play music now. And it also is interesting, it depends on the speaker. So if I do that down here, I'm going to get very different music than if I do it in the kitchen. Because when I'm in the kitchen, I want something that's kind of upbeat and uh, more modern. Uh, I don't play a lot of classical, I don't play a lot of jazz when I'm in the kitchen, because I'm doing dishes and stuff. So uh, anyway, I tell it to play music, and it's playing uh, Paul Simon. Uh, Graceland, and I don't know if you're Paul Simon fans or not. I actually appreciate Paul Simon. I think he's made some pretty, pretty good music, and I I enjoy uh, the Graceland album. I think is a fantastic album. I really like it a lot. Uh, remember buying it when it came out way back in the dark ages, where you had to actually go to the store and buy music. So, anyway, and Graceland has this. I mean, some beautiful writing in, in, on that album, the, the words, uh, the lyrics. And Grayson has this one, he, he's talking about basically being separated, divorced from his wife and taking his son, uh, I believe, I'm trying to remember, yeah, it's, he says he's the child of my first marriage, uh, on a pilgrimage to Graceland. So it's about divorce and separation and bonding between a father and son and, and all those kinds of things. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, except for the whole divorce thing, which is kind of sad. Anyway, he, he, there's this line that just haunts me when I hear it. And, and the line is, uh, she comes back to tell me she's gone. And I just, that is such a well-written line. You know, it's so compact and there's so much packed into that. 
And isn't that just like a woman who would tear you apart, hurt you, break your heart, and then come back to tell you she's done it? That, that... <laughs> Sorry, women, if you're watching, but guys know what I'm talking about. We've all been through it. Don't get me wrong, everything's fine between me and the missus. <laughs> she, she's coming back, but it just it just kind of, you know, being being bachelorfied right now and hearing that it it just kind of struck a note in me. Comes back to tell me she's gone. Well, folks, I got a busy day planned. Got uh much to do. Before I go, uh this Friday we got something special. Once again, push the right button, Michael. Yes, once again, we have uh, gotten an agreement from my good friend Santa Claus. He is going to be uh, visiting us on, on the Friday Night Live stream. He said he can spend about 45 minutes or so with us. And he said, no holds bar. He'll answer any questions you have about what it's like to be Santa Claus, what Santa Claus does, uh, what's he doing in his off time, uh, those pesky elves, do they really, do they make cookies when nobody's looking, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yes, yeah, Santa Claus, Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, this coming Friday, December 16th, I believe, yes, December 16th. I had to look at the screen to double check that. So hope you can join us Friday night uh, for a, a, a visit from Santa Claus. And uh, with that, I'm going to tie this up. So I hope you all have a fantastic Sunday, a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Take care, friends.